What is the probability that x is greater than 4y if x and y are independent, standard normally distributed, and x and y are independent, uniformly distributed on 0, 1? You should give each part of the question 5 minutes of thought and then you can watch the two solutions I have prepared for them. So, this first part of the question is about two IID standard normal distributions. Firstly, we plot x on the graph. Then, we know that if y has a normal distribution, c times y has as well, with the expectation of cy equal to c times the expectation of y, and the variance of cy equal to c squared times the variance of y. The above implies that the random variable minus 4y has a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 16. Now, we have both parts of the comparison we want to make. We can rewrite x greater than 4y as x minus 4y greater than 0. We also remember the rules pertaining to summing two independent normally distributed random variables and apply them to x and minus 4y. So, we now know that x minus 4y is a normal distribution with mean 0. Due to the symmetry around the mean of a normal distribution, we conclude that the probability that x is greater than 4y is 1 over 2. Now for another solution. With a pair of random variables x and minus 4y, and y for that matter, centered around 0, we can split both at the 0 boundary, marking 4 quadrants. We employ this partition to extend the probability of x greater than 4y as a sum of conditional probabilities. Given what we said before, that x and y are independent and symmetrical around 0, the probabilities used to weight the sum are all equal to 1 divided by 4. We can also easily see that x is always greater than 4y when x is positive, y is negative, and x is never greater than 4y when x is negative, y is positive. Replacing all the values derived before, we get a new formula for the probability we are seeking. The two probabilities involved on the right-hand side of the equation look very similar, condition on opposite quadrants. We can denote x prime and y prime as the opposites of x and y and know that they both have the same distribution and are independent exactly like their counterparts. We rewrite the second probability, replacing everywhere x with minus x prime and y with minus y prime. And use the property deduced before to get that the initial value is equal to the probability that x is less than 4y, condition on x and y greater than 0. Given that they are continuous random variables, we can change the conditioning to x and y at least 0. We replace this equivalency in the initial result and use the fact that the two probabilities on the right hand side are complementary to arrive at the same result as the first solution, 1 divided by 2. With two options for the first question under all belt, we can turn our attention to the one involving two independent uniform random variables. You might jump the gun and say that you get the same result in this case, but it is a false equivalency. The sum of two uniform random variables is not uniform itself. It has an irving hall distribution. If you know the probability density function of this, you could use it to find the correct answer to the question. I'd say that the majority doesn't know this at the top of their heads, so we must find another solution. One thing to visualize the pair of the two random variables uniformly distributed, we get a unit square. We can draw the line of x equals 4y, with the area of the triangle below it representing the space where x is more than 4y. Given the distributions and the independence of x and y, the probability that the pair xy is in this triangle is equal to the area of the triangle scaled by that of the square, which is 1 divided by 8. 
We can also use convolutions for an analytical solution to this part of the question. We write this as a double integral over the intervals 0, 1 and 0, x divided by 4. Since x and y are uniform, their probability density functions are equal to the identity function of the interval between 0 and 1. Replacing this in the initial formula, we get that the double integral is, as well, equal to an eight. If the four solutions before were not convincing enough, you can simulate the results and get the same values as those obtained mathematically. Including the solution does not result in a complete list of all the possible ways to solve the questions. You can also use convolutions, characteristics, functions, or any other method that might come to your mind. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this and would love to see more, like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the alarm bell to be notified when new videos are released. Leave any comments about this problem below or on the dedicated webpage. For more info, please check the description box below. See you next time!